we did scales for a while, um, and we'll come back to scales probably soon. Um, we looked at uh, you know various scale systems. So tagging on for that, one thing I wanted to bring to everyone's attention is uh, this uh, development of flexibility, Dunis, Opus Thirty Five. Um, again, I'll link a, uh, a link, link, a link in the uh, description so you can get a copy of this if you want or just bung me an email over and I'll send you one. So um, this is Dunis and it's really, really very good. It really is good. Really. And once again, it's interesting and I think worthwhile just to read what he writes at the beginning. The aspiring instrumentalist should start as early as possible to use his mind in learning technique. Now, we'll talk about that a lot, I think, because that's really, really key. Exercises that do not require the active cooperation of the brain are quite useless. There is nothing more detrimental to the development of technique than mental sluggishness and physical routine. The studies presented in this book are such that they demand constant mental activity. Their purpose is the cultivation and the development of mental alertness and prompt physical response, the key to technical perfection. So this is central in Dunis's idea. It, his idea is that you're not training your fingers, you're training, training your brain. And that's his sole objection, I think, to these hundreds and thousands of hours that violinists spend playing scales, is that you just can't possibly keep mentally alert. Um, it was Heifetz that said, you know, if he'd ever practiced too much, he never would have been so successful. Two hours a day is plenty. And that's true. If you're really concentrating, two hours is a long time. Um, so the purpose of these exercises, according to us, but the purpose of all of it is to use our brain to control our hands. So anyway, um, this is really good, I think. It, Specifically, it deals with the second finger and this problem that stretch between the second and third finger. So the, there's, I think there are 18 of these combinations. Yeah, 18. So the, the first thing is that we, we've got to play this very rhythmically and we've got to play this with an uninterrupted vibrato. Again, we will talk about vibrato more, but Vibrato is key, not only because it sounds nice. Vibrato is key because it means your hand is relaxed. Because you cannot vibrate with a tense hand. Therefore, by insisting that we do vibrato on all technical exercises, and I mean all technical exercises, then we are insisting that our muscles stay in a, in a stage of relaxation. Of course, if they're not, stop playing, relax down again, and then come back to it. So if we just look at the number one, the first way to do this is four notes to a bow, uh, forte, sustained, with a nice vibrato. First way to do it, and then we do the whole thing piano and fast. So, yes, um, then we take each four group of four and we play them very fast. ETC, ETC. And so, as I say, there are 18 of these exercises, and they're really. They're really very, very good. Certainly helps with scales an awful lot. Um, and then he's got other ones. And then, of course, we're doing it in rhythms. All this sort of good stuff and different bowings. So, yeah, I highly recommend this. The Development of Flexibility, DC Dunis, Opus 35. Uh, links in the description. Uh, if you like this video, like, subscribe, bell button, all, get the alerts. Uh, it's June, this is the, the 11th of June, so we've done 11 videos, and we're going to do another 19. Okay, bye.